Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be talking about CSS. So CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and it's basically a way to style your HTML pages. Oops. Uh, okay, so here we have a really basic HTML page with a header, and then with the content we'll place between these body tags. So, <clears throat> for example, let's just say we had a P element paragraph, and we had some text in it. Hello world, I am learning to code. <coughs> So we have some text here, and now if you open this page, you'll see the text. But now what if we wanted to change the color, the font size, the background color of the page, etc. All these things are done in CSS. So to add a CSS file to the to what we want to do is have all the CSS um, styles in a file. And then we want to link that file to this HTML page. So we do that by doing using the link tag. And we don't have to specify a closing tag like this because um, we don't need any content between them. We just the content for the link tag goes within it as an attribute tag. So here we'll do link ref equals style.css. So we'll go into our folder and create a new file called style.css. And then we need to specify the relationship. So rel stands relationship, and we do style sheet. So now this uh, CSS file is linked to this HTML page. So now in the CSS file, we can create styles for everything we see in here. So now in this, so now in the style file, style.css, the syntax is selector bracket and then property and value. This is how the CSS file will look. Let me just change my indentation. So this is how it will look. So for example, we can do, in this case, the selector, we can do P. So we're going to get all P tags and we're going to make them very large. We'll make them 28 pixels. So we can get rid of that. So every P tag in the page will have a font size of 28 pixels. And here you can see it got larger. So that's a really simple um, CSS example. Um, so I'm going to go through a few very common and useful CSS um, properties. So font size is one, then you have color, red. Um, you can have, okay, so let's give it a border. We'll do a border. So we can do the shorthand border version. So we'll do the size, the type, and the color. So for example, five, five pixels, um, dotted gray. We'll give it a background of light blue. We'll give it a margin top of 50 pixels. So it'll be pushed down from the top and then pushed from the left by 50 pixels. So now if we re reload this, it won't look too nice. <laughs> it actually looks really ugly, but you can see how these, fi these um, styles are being applied. So there's some really common um, CSS um, properties. So let's create an unordered list. Unordered list, and then we'll have some list items within it. We'll have uh, A, 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 B, 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 C, C, C. So now let's take this, let's create two unordered lists. So we reload this, we have two unordered lists now. So there's this thing called uh, CSS resets. So you can see how the browser adds in these um, these uh, list types, these um, borders. Sorry, not borders, but um, bullets. So browsers have their own default styles for certain elements. And if you Google CSS reset, there's actually this code you can copy that will reset everything so that there are no styles applied. So here's a good one. Let's minify it so it doesn't take up so much space. And then we'll take this and copy it into our, at the top of our file. Now if we reload this, you'll see that there are no, literally no styles. So, okay. So we have these two lists. So now, because we have these two lists, 
because we have these two lists, you might want to access one of them and change the styles, but not do the same thing for the other. But they're both unordered lists. So what you can do in the HTML is give it an attribute of ID. So ID first list. And then here, ID second list. So now this ID allows you to access just a certain element within the CSS. So we got rid of this p tag. So to access an element by its ID in CSS, you use the hashtag and then the name. So now we can do something like board uh, background uh, yellow. Now if we reload this, only the first one will have a background of yellow and the other one won't. And now we can do something like first list, every list item within it. So you can just continuously um, create uh, add spaces between elements the farther you um, are nested down. So for example, in this list item, if we had BBB and then a paragraph, paragraph test, we can do something like first list, list item, P. So let's give each one a background of gray. Reload it. Oops. And then we'll give it a width of 50 pixels. We'll give it some padding. And then we'll float them left. So float basically takes each list item and moves it to the left of each other. So, but you can see here how these, these things got jumbled up. What we actually want to do is in the parent element, first list, we need to set an overflow property of auto, and that'll capture all of these items within the container. It's something you just need to do whenever you're floating elements. And you can see here how this paragraph test jumped to the um, jump below BBB, and that's because the paragraph element is a block type. So in, in HTML, you have two types, block and then inline. So I'll show a quick example here. P, hello. And then there's, a, there's an inline element called span, which is very frequently used. Goodbye. Hello, goodbye. Okay, so now if we give a background, so the P element, P ID, hello. So now we're gonna access just this P element. Because if we just do P here, like this, it'll access this P element and this one. And we don't want that to happen. We just want to access this one right here. This one. So P, so hashtag hello. And now background uh, orange. And then the span element, we'll give the background uh, green. Now you can see the difference here. So the, the P element is a block element, and what that means is it takes up a whole section of the HTML page, a whole block. It's separated from the, um, the elements above it and below it. A span element only takes up um, the, the space that it takes up. So here, goodbye literally only takes up this much space. So if we had several span elements, they appear next to each other. They continuously appear next to each other until it hits the end of the page. But a block element takes up the whole section of the page. And so that's why here, this P element, paragraph test, jumps down. Because it's trying to be displayed here, but a um, a block element needs to take up its, um, the whole section of the page, and so it drops down and takes up this whole section right here. So to get around this, what we'll do is we'll change this to a span. Let's get rid of these. These are just for demonstration. And now if you reload it, whoops, you still have this paragraph test. Okay, so now it's not, uh, it's still great, it's jumping down, but that's because we gave it too small of a width, so we'll do 200 pixels, and now you can see it's uh, displaying correctly. Um, so this is supposed to be some sort of navigation, but it's not looking too nice. So what we'll do is we'll center it, 
And this is how you center um, a block element. You do margin, zero auto. We can get rid of this. And now you have this, um, these elements. And now we can add this um, CSS property of hover. So link hover. background white. So now what happens when you hover over these elements, they change the background color changes to white. Uh, and now to access this other list, we can just do ID second list, and we can change the background to whatever we want, green. We can um, do some padding, margins. So you can see we have two different lists now, and we give some background colors. There's also font size, which we covered, so font size 25 pixels. We can change the font family, so we can do something like uh, Tahoma. You can see the bigger and uh, the font family is different. So these are a few uh, basic CSS properties along with their values. There's another thing, so we talked about IDs here, and there's another way to access elements within a CSS, um, sorry, access elements within a CSS file. So here we, we discussed the ID and also just access, accessing an element via just the element. So you can do P or you can do something like LI. So since we're doing LI, it's going to access every single list element in the page. So LI font size 80 pixels. So every single list item now, list element, is huge. It's 80 pixels. So those are two ways to access elements and there's another way which is a class name. So a class name, so an ID, you can only have one ID on a page. So ID second list, you can't have another element on the page with the same ID. You can't have this. If you're going to have elements with, if you're going to have several elements and you want to use the same name, you can use what's called a class. So we'll do P and we'll say class. Um, class test. And the reason you might want to use this is because if several elements on your page same, uh, share the same styles, you can just give them a class name to share. So here we have A, B, C, D. We'll take this class test. And so in CSS now, to access each class, instead of using the hashtag like you did for IDs, you use the period. Class test. You need font uh, to color red. So you can, you can see here A, B, C, D, and they each have a color of red. And now, for example, if we got rid of this class test and called it uh, something else, it changes color. It doesn't share the same styles anymore. And so a class is great because you can have several elements with the same class name, and when you change the style right here, all of them become updated. So those are the differences between IDs and classes. Classes you can assign to several elements. IDs you can only assign to one. Um, yeah, and so the next the next tutorial will be um, creating a personal website using what we've learned so more so far, along with some more advanced CSS um, properties and values and selectors.